Peace, people. Welcome to the latest episode of the Rough Draft. I am your host, Kevin Alberto Sabio, and in this episode of the Rough Draft, I'll be profiling my eighth book release called Seductra Web of Desire. Thank you for tuning in to this Selecting the Heritage Month edition of the Rough Draft. Um, I will be profiling my book, Seductra Web of Desire. It is my eighth book release. I published that book back in 2017. Um, the book revolves around uh, a young lady who is a trained dancer. Her name is Dasha Bagan. She's actually uh, from New York City. Gets kind of dismayed with working in the music and dance industry. And then she relocates down to the South. She moves to North Carolina. I have her moved to this um, fictional city called Carverville City. So she goes there. She's able to uh, get a job. She's working part-time as an instructor at a youth center or a community center. And unfortunately, she ends up losing her job. So her struggles begin there. She actually ends up um, struggling a little bit. Uh, she lives with a number of housemates. Uh, one of her roommates, her name is Kenya Slade, actually works as a dancer. So in order to help Dasha out, uh, she kind of convinces her to uh, come to her club and dance, well, to work as a dancer, as an exotic dancer. At first, Dasha is very resistant to this, but uh, because of the fact of her situation where she's uh, apparently unemployed and her savings is starting to dwindle down, she finally ends up agreeing um, to join uh, her club that she works at and dance there. So she ends up taking the name of Seductra as a dancer, working at this place called Thur but Thoroughbred Stables. So it is there where she actually ends up meeting um, the two cousins who actually own Thoroughbred Stables. So you have Teray Winston, who's the actual owner of the uh, of the club. And then you also have uh, Marley Winston, his cousin, also known as Scout, which is actually a nickname given to him by Kenya because of the fact that he, uh, in her words, the dude never smiles. <laughs> so um, Dasha is actually quite intrigued with somebody like Marley because he actually he's very direct. He's very business like um, he doesn't really try to get into a personal relationship with any of the dancers, but he's actually very professional with them because he always calls them by their real names. He doesn't call them by their stage names. And he just basically he has some rules. Just come to work, do your job and uh, get paid. Everybody goes home. Everybody's happy. Um. Marley is pretty much the brains behind Thoroughbred Stables, and even though he's their security chief, or he's their head of security, I should say, but uh, he basically runs the day-to-day -day operations, even though his cousin, Tere, actually owns the he's in the business, but Marley makes sure that it runs, and it runs efficiently, and that they're able to make a profit, so he takes care of everything else, takes care of security, takes care of the dancers, takes care of the like, liquor deliveries, and food deliveries, and all the other employees, he handles all of them. Meanwhile, Tere kind of lays back and he's chilling. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny. I mean, Dasha is the older of the two women. So um, Dasha um, and her housemate, Kenya. Kenya's stage name is Luscious. She's kind of on the young side, a little immature. I wanted her to be between anywhere between the ages of 20 and 23. Um, her and Dasha are actually very close, other than being um, housemates. They're actually um, friends. And so there's a little bit of a conflict between Dasha, Kenya, and Marley that I have talked about a little bit in the story. It's like not so much of a love triangle, but that there is something there because uh, when Dasha and uh, Marley kind of start having feelings to each other, start making it a little bit obvious, and that you see Kenya kind of start throwing a little bit of a monkey wrench up in there. <laughs> And then once you actually get a chance to read the book, um, you'll get to see exactly why it is that there's a little bit of issue. But towards the end of the novel, it actually all gets straightened out. Um, Dasha is a little bit different from all the other dancers. I mean, one, she's a little bit older. Number two, she carries herself differently. I mean, this is not a business that she wanted to get into. She wasn't looking to get into the industry. Really, this was just something to put some money in her pocket and get to something better. So she differentiates herself from a lot of the other dancers at Seductra by her thing is more dancing to like more smooth R&B, like laid back old school music, like slow jams or whatnot. A lot of the other dancers, they kind of dance like more hip hop music, more the ratchet <laughs> kind of crunk music and whatnot. You, you know what I'm saying? The whole booty shaking type of thing. She's more like being real playful with it because of her dance background. She knows like how rhythm music can really mesmerize you and kind of entice you. 
You know, say she don't have she doesn't have to be all crass and obvious and overly sexual with it. And that's basically how she uses her dance skills, like to be able to make her, for lack of a better term, career <laughs> um, in this field. And it's also um, there's a lot of distinctions I try to make. Like I one of the parallels I try to uh, do is um, the difference between a strip joint, a strip club and a gentleman's club. <laughs> You know, say one one's supposed to be a little bit better than the other. Um, also, I make a distinction between a stripper and an exotic dancer. <laughs> oh, one's more professional with it. You know, say whereas the other one's kind of crass with it. It's like anybody can do it. Whereas like exotic dancers, more like yeah, you're you're more entertaining. <laughs> you know, say it's not just straight up being all sexual and throwing your 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 female genitals in some man's face or whatever. <laughs> You know, and um, another thing about this book is, like, I tried to make something, I tried to make it important, an important factor about it is the music. Because the funny thing about this project was when I originally did it, it was it was originally a screenplay. Well, I had actually written three quarters of it. I had completely written the screenplay. But in screenplay format, um, it was important because I had written it about, like, say mid to early 2000s, like, so at that time, for me, there was a, a serious change, specifically in hip hop music. There was a lot about it that I didn't like, you know, and it, this project was kind of supposed to speak to that, it, you know what I'm saying? And so a lot of the music that I actually wanted Dasha to dance to at that time was like 90s music, because a lot of 90s R&B was very smooth, you know what I'm saying? It was very enticing. It was very grown and sexy. But like by the mid two thousands, like a lot of the music, whether hip hop or R and B, kind of started to change. So when I actually published this book in twenty seventeen, I actually had to change the music that I wanted to use a little bit. So I tried to do more contemporary stuff, like early to mid two thousands, instead of like having her straight up dance to like nineties music. So it, it, you know, it, it was the musical factor was important to this project, both when it was supposed to be a film and as a novel. And uh, it was kind of hard. I don't want to say it was hard, but it was kind of hard to find certain updated music, uh, you say, for Dasha to really be able to dance to because I don't necessarily listen to a hell of a lot of popular music anymore because uh, I actually stopped listening to the radio like back in 2003. <laughs> so a lot of the more popular artists, I don't really, I'm not really all that familiar with their work. I do know certain other artists who I do like, who I did listen to, you say, at the turn of the century, but... For the most part, I really had to do some uh, real research for like more current contemporary and smoothed out style, you know, saying soul music type of R&B in order like for Dasha uh, to be able to, as Seductra, use that music to help her really reach her audience. Um, I was really happy when I wrote this book. Um, I have to admit, when, uh, when I originally wrote this as a, as a screenplay, one of my influences was Cinemax, or Skinemax, as we would call the late night version of the, you know, say, well, on them freaky television shows or whatnot. So I just, it was kind of an influencing factor. It was like, I would watch it and I'm like, hey, I don't see us in it. I'm going to write something for us. <laughs> I'm going to write us being all grown and sexy and sexual. <laughs> so that, that was kind of the impetus between a seductive web of desire. Um, it's a good story. I actually liked it a lot. I like Dasha, um, especially with the fact that um, she's the only Latino character out of my staple that I have that I actually gave a nationality to. She's Dominican and Puerto Rican or Domi Bodhi. Um, and I I don't want to say I play it up in this in this story, but um, I do make it a factor, which is actually, a, I don't want to say it's unusual. Well, it is unusual for me because like I don't usually focus on nationality, just the fact that I have, like, Afro-Latino characters in my books. The other funny thing about it is, um, Dasha was not the actual lead character when I originally wrote the story. Actually, Kenya was supposed to be the main character in Seduction when it was uh, originally in film format, but then, um, Dasha was part of another project I had. I redid that project, but for whatever reason, her character just did not fit, so I had to eliminate her from that. But I liked the way that I developed that character, so I kept it. <laughs> I was going to recycle her in some other project that I thought. And so the more I started working on Seductra, the more that I thought Kenya didn't really fit as the main character. 
So I actually demoted her and I brought Dasha in. <laughs> I made Dasha the main character. So um, I kept Kenya. I just didn't um, keep her as the main character. She is a supporting character. She's pretty much a secondary character. She's like the second most important character you say in there other than Marley. So I'm really glad at the way that this project turned out. Um, feedback hasn't been the way that I wish it was. Um, haven't made a whole lot of sales online for it. And I haven't really had an opportunity to really like sell it hand to hand at like festivals or anything like that. It's just been um last three years have not been very easy for me as far as being accessible to going out to um do festivals or book signings or other independent appearances. But um it's a great story. The few people who I have had um read the book, they liked it actually. So I'm I'm happy about that. So uh thank you very much for tuning into this episode of the Rough Draft. Um, if you would like a copy of Seductra, it's available in paperback format. You can go to Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and Books and Million to get it. It's also available in ebook format, so you can go to the mainstream ebook format. Oops, mainstream ebook um, outlets to get it. Uh, Kindle, Nook, Kobo, iTunes, uh, Scrid, Playster, yada yada yada, all them other places. It's also available in ebook format through. Uh, for libraries uh, through Hoopla, Baker and Taylor, Biblioteca, and Overdrive. Um, if you're watching this video on YouTube, like the video, please leave a comment, definitely subscribe to the channel. Um, also, press the notification button to let you know whenever I drop the latest episode of the Rough Draft or any of my other videos. So, thank you very much again for tuning into this Latino Heritage Month episode. Keep the fist raised. I'm always on my literary grind, and I'll definitely see you next time. Thank you so much. Continue to celebrate Latino Heritage Month, and I'll see you again soon. Peace.